Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Rev and Evan, Abe Tango. Today we're on the road. We're cruising up near Daytona, Florida from our uh, home base in Tampa, Florida. And we're going to look at a Fox Body Mustang. We thought it'd be pretty cool to pick one up for the channel, do some basic mods, some tech. So we're going to go, uh, Abe found a car on Facebook Marketplace, right? Yeah, I found a 1990 um, LX, 5.0, 5 speed. Uh, 373 gears. Other than that, it's pretty much stock. It has some issues, but um, that's what I think we're going to address through some of these videos. Yeah, we wanted to pick up a car that's affordable, something in the $5,000 range, where it would be somebody's first hot rod, so anybody can afford a car like this, and we'll show you how to fix things on it, how to hot rod it, how to make it faster. We're going to take it to the drag strip, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we could get it into... Um, I don't know, 11s, 10s, bolt-ons. Yeah, of course, we're going to start. It'll probably run 14 stock, but we're going to dyno it. We'll see what kind of power it makes. Um, like Abe said, we'll address any issues, and we'll show you how to fix things. And we'll also show you what to look for if you're going to buy your first Fox Body Mustang, because there are some trouble areas and some things to look for. There's a lot of great companies out there making parts, so just about anything on one of these cars can be repaired. And we expect a couple things to be wrong with it, and that's kind of cool though, because we're going to want to do some uh, some things that we fix up and take care of some of the problems, right? Yeah, we just want to make sure there's not real huge issues, like uh, anything bent or rusted out or anything like that. Because you know, yep. oh, there it is. Oh man, it. it actually looks good from here. <laughs> it does look good from All right. here. Cool. It looks good from this angle. Yeah, it's a pretty clean looking car. All right, let's uh, All right. check it out. So. Yep. Here we go. So first impressions. You're getting the same first look at it that we are. Ten holes, bald tires in the eight front at least. It's not a ten, but it's a eight. Hey. How How's it going? I'm Evan. How are you doing? What's your name? Sean. Hey, Sean. That's the beast. <laughs> the beast. Mind being on a uh, on camera. Now I find it. Okay. We're gonna take a close look at this thing. We're going to go over the car and uh, hopefully after we give it a thorough examination we'll be loading her up but you never know what will happen here. Have to take a look. See the radios on the floor. We'll do a quick walk around. There's the clutch pad. We'll do a quick walk around and then uh, we'll really go through the car. Yeah, yeah, it always pops off when it's Well, that actually works. Look at that. Ash ray door works. No, no, I fixed up most of the stuff in here. Uh, I had to source out or repair myself. Um, even the parcel blocker back here, it took forever to find one. What's that? Oh, it has that too, yeah. I, it took me a couple years to find one of those. How long have you owned it? Since, it's gonna be 10 years this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot on a Fox body that can go right. There's a lot that can go wrong. We're gonna... There's a few things you look for, like these stickers here. With the VIN on it. That's always a good sign when uh, the hatch, the fenders. Yep, and that sticker should be on one of the fenders too. Let's pop the hood and check that out. Stock hood, I like the stock hood. Yeah, I got I took the fiberglass out and covered it. Oh, okay. I washed it off. That goes with the car too? Yep. It's got a Mach 1 uh, aftermarket hood. And that's painted too? Yep. Yep. See, we got the stickers on both sides. Yep. Got a little bit of surface rust here. Yep. So what these stickers tell you here is that it's, at least it should be if they if the numbers match, if it's an original fender, if those are missing, could be a repaint or it might have been whacked. You're gonna look for, you're gonna look for dents and repair work on the strut towers or especially up here if the car got in a front end collision, especially the radiator support. You wanna make sure that's straight. And the other thing too, if you look down, you can see the crash bars on the frame. That's the one thing I looked at. Okay, they're still the front, there. They're still and they're still dead straight. That's part of the reason why I purchased it too. First thing I looked at. Uh, this car, obviously, air conditioning, factory headers. Yeah, everything are still in place. The only thing, like I said, I upgraded the alternator. 
Mm -hmm. I, heard I had the hood on there and the fractured one got water all and it messed it up. So right. I did a Gen 2 swap. A little bit more amperage there. Yeah. Oh, yeah so everything works a lot better after I did that. Stock air box is there, but the silencer, there's an air silencer that fits in there. Yeah, that's, that's missing. That's is the air silencer, the boot that goes here, yep. and the cover for the coil. Those are the three stock yeah. things. Right. Yeah. Rust-wise, it's it's pretty good. I mean, you have surface rust. It's not bad. But usually the places you want to look are around here. Because there's actually weep holes here. If those get clogged up, you get a lot of rust in these areas, front and back, around here. Yeah, and this car looks pretty clean. It's pretty clean. And yeah, they, they, they tend to rust out like yeah. along here because the water the sits outside. in there. Sometimes if you don't see it on the outside, you'll see it here. Right, and you'll also note the hatch stays up on its own. Without a vice grip. <laughs> yeah, without without a vice grip. So these are an easy fix. The strut uh, hatch, uh, hatch struts are an easy fix, but it's, uh, it's in the yeah. box. Mm -hmm. you want to start looking at all the different things that could be wrong with it to determine how much you'll have to replace. We'll flip this up, it's got the spare in it. Another spot for rust on these. This factory sound editing looks like it's in pretty good condition. Factory uh, space yeah. saver there, and the jack is even in there. Oh yeah, yeah. hell yeah, I found a lot of stuff. <laughs> also, um, a problem area on the Fox Body Mustangs are the door handles. This one at least feels relatively tight. The door seal looks like it's in decent shape. You can see some some overspray, but probably not that big a deal. And then the door striker right here. These pieces right here, when they wear out, the door can move up and down. Oh. And that can cause the door hinges to start to wear out prematurely. So this works. Oh. So we'll shut the door, see how good the door shuts. That actually sounds pretty good, Abe. It sounds very tight. That and sounds nice and tight. Can, uh, always tell if the hinges are good. Just lift like this. If it's bad, it'll wobble. This one very tight. It's gonna need tires right away. The tires are definitely shot. Um, this this door handle over here, this one's looser than the other side, but again, that's an easy repair. Companies like NPD and Summit Racing, you can get all kinds of stuff. Our window car, the rug is kind of shot. The seats are problematic in these two. How does that seat feel? Because the right side is it doing a lean? I don't know. Yeah, see if it's doing. It looks straight to me. How does it feel? It's actually pretty good. It has a little bit of a lean. Not that bad. Inside the seat, the spot welds break on the seat, and it allows the seat to flex. And over time, it really leans out bad. The power lumbar works. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Now, one thing you always want to check. It's cold. Let's check so we're that too. Do a cold start. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, manifold's ice cold. I forgot about these clutches. Oh, Heavy? And it's gonna I'm make noise if the throw bearing went bad bearing. on it. Throw up bearing's bad? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm listening for any kind of weird noises. You can hear the power steering pump a little bit, but it's ice cold. So the oil pressure is good. It's idling smooth. No check engine light. No check engine light, which is, which is great. This is an airbag car. It's a, it's a 90. Yep. It's a 90. Horn works. Cruise control doesn't work. I didn't pull the fender off to take a look at it. I think something to do with the, the bottle that holds the vacuum. That's the only thing I didn't really get to look at. It. Go ahead and start it again. Oh yeah, that 5.0 rumble. Oh yeah. Go ahead and see if the power windows both work. That one, the gear is bad on that one. It'll go down and click, click, click. Um, it needs a motor. All right, you can hear the motor. So yeah, this is typical. Ford. let's see if we can get it. Uh, All right, so that's going to be that's going to need repair. The paint looks good. No sunroof. That's good. Yeah. 
We don't want a sunroof. Yeah, you don't. Some of the basics, anytime you buy a used car, you want to check all the lights, brake lights, turn signals. Abe already hit the horn. We know the horn works. The wipers. You want to cover all the basics just so you know what you're in for as far as simple repairs. Um, we covered some of the stuff as far as it being a Fox Body Mustang and some of the trouble spots, the rust, the door, the door hinges and the door handles. Under the hood, it's kind of like any old car. How many miles are on this thing? Uh, 140. 140,000. Yeah. So you're, you're buying an older car. We haven't gone under the car yet. We're going to get a flashlight. We'll look at the torque boxes. Uh, you said it has frame connectors in it, aftermarket yeah. frame yep. connectors. They've so been welded on. We'll, we'll look at the welds because just it's because it has pretty. frame connectors doesn't mean that's a good thing. Could be some it's rust going on there, but that's all right. That's, that's something that hopefully could be uh, either fixable or it's not a big deal. You want to take a look at the exhaust system. And these are all things that, you know, can be replaced, but you want to make sure that it's within your budget. Um, and some things you might just want to upgrade anyway to something that's more high performance. So, I don't know, let's keep, uh, let's keep going. Typical core leaks, you know, right under the armor like a balancer, the front seal. Mm -hmm. That's what's leaking there. Um, and I think one of the valve covers got a little leak too. Yeah, that, that valve cover. Right. I was gonna do a swap. Clutch fan is, is in good shape. Yeah, the clutch. Yeah. They painted this upper and lower intake. Um, yeah, I'm never a fan of that. Yeah, that's and that's how I bought it from this guy too. So I didn't want to take the AC work. The AC works perfect. I mean it's ice cold. And I didn't want to discharge and leave everything open. Good idea. You know. What other stuff aside from the hood do you have that goes with the car? I got a five five lug axle conversion for the rear. Okay. I just haven't sourced out the front yet. Right, I see a drive shaft over and there. I got the aluminum drive shaft. So I got a five lug there. Okay. It's all stock, you know, 30, uh, 20. That's off a of Ranger. What axles something. are those? What's that? Is that off a of Ranger or a. Uh... No, these are off uh, a newer Mustang, like a SM95. Oh, so they're actually longer. To the wider yeah. axle, though. Yes. We probably won't use them then. Right. What's up with this motor? This came out of an F 150. <coughs> and, and that goes with the car? Yes. Uh, and the reason I kept it because it's a roller motor, it's an HO. And uh, I just went ahead and put new bearings, new mains, new connecting rod bearings in it. Resealed everything. It's a stock cam. Stock cam. Everything fully stock on this. Okay. Um, the distributor is a little different because it's a '96 model it came out of. Right. So this that's when Ford went to that different ignition setup. It has a good amount. This is a good amount of. Yeah. Uh, and, and this this truck only had. Like, like 120,000 miles on this motor. Okay, but it is a spare motor. Yeah. These aren't bolted down? Nope. Yeah, I didn't. Well, Definitely spare. It's a bit of cleaning. Yeah, it's going to have to be gone through, but hey, it's spare parts, right. you know. And I mean, it's, that's why I got it. Okay. Of course, every Mustang guy knows the quarter windows. Oh, yeah. They're the worst. They're the worst on these things, <laughs> but these are pretty respectable for. The age of the car, they're not totally I, destroyed. I, and for the first eight years I had, everything else. Uh, off road uh, H pipe. And this is what you were talking about with the subframe connectors. They're welded, but not painted. Yeah, that's always a fear of mine. This thing always falls down. So the fact that. That one, I, that works. The original one I have sitting somewhere in there that came with the car. Does it work? No. The, it, it was broken, like it never stayed up, and this one I. Found but does it. the light work? Yes. No, and the old, the original one, no. Okay. Yeah, this one I got out of another Mustang. Just, right. As, as long as it stays up, yeah. that's cool. If it, we can make it work. We can wire that thing up. Sun visors. Hey, hey Abe, the uh, the headliner has a tear in it. It's decent, but, but it's, it's uh, not. Again, it's not like it's falling down where we would have to replace it right away. That's something that you could live with, you know, for the short term. Um, what you really want to be looking at is a lot of the hardcore things that are going to make the car drivable. Like right now, this car, um, it's in nice shape, but it's not drivable. He's saying it's got a couple of oil leaks, uh, possibly a coolant leak from a freeze out plug. And of course, you know, the clutch is really super stiff and does not have good feel. So throw out bearing, possibly a, a new cable is in order. And I don't know the condition of the clutch itself. So those are things that are going to be a guess, and you kind of have to budget that in from the beginning, knowing that you're probably going to have to repair that. And at the same point, if you're doing a throw-up bearing, 
you're going to do the clutch. You're not just going to change out a throttle bearing. Right. Probably either yeah. get I the did. flywheel machined, and as far as you're there, you're going to put a new rear main sill on the motor. <clears throat> now, on an older car, especially one that's been sitting a year, <clears throat> in order to get to that stuff, you're going to have to drop the exhaust. So on an older exhaust, if there's a lot of rust, you might be cutting stuff off, and then you're in for maybe a, a little bit of an exhaust system too. So again, that's another thing to budget and another thing to look for. Um, Abe, what did you think of the, um, you took a look at the frame connectors. What's going on there? They are there. They weren't painted after they were welded in. Right. So, but it, they look all right. Um, we're probably going to, have, going to have to clean it up, paint it, and make sure that's all covered up, undercoated, painted, whatever, just so it won't have any problems of rotting anything away. Right, but uh, the welds look good. It looks like it was done properly. It was done properly. You don't want to burn through the floor and have issues uh, No, it was, it was done pro properly. And even these panels back here can be even dyed. You can change the color of the interior to really anything you want. But this is looking pretty nice. Like we could actually probably maybe restore what, what's, what's here. Yeah, um, these might need to be repainted just because I think these are from uh, maybe an 86. They were a different color. I could be wrong yeah. on that. But things like the, look at the seals are, there's a tear here in the seal, a tear here. Again, I've seen them where they're completely destroyed. And if the hatch doesn't shut right, if the struts aren't working good, if the, if the striker here doesn't work good, and if this seal isn't good, right in this area here on a fox body, you will find that the, the, it starts there's, rubbing. there starts rubbing. There will be contact, and it will wear the paint off when, with the hatch moving. I like the ride height. Nothing's sagging. It doesn't look twisted. Pretty stiff. Oh, I didn't tell you, but the rear end going to be done. All right, we got a dent right here. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, Sean. But there, you've got a little thing there. Again, not the worst thing in the world, but... It's, uh, it's got... 373s. Okay. I'm going to take a peek underneath. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see the uh, frame connectors. The exhaust, does that have Flowmasters on it? Yes. It's okay. the standard 40s. It's got an aftermarket exhaust uh, on there, which is why it sounded so good. You can always tell the newer school and the older school guys because we used to go by a two or three chamber. Yep. Yeah. And now they call it what, 40s, 40s and, and... 40 series and... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just know two or three chamber. So the, it still has the anti-roll bar in the back. It's got different shocks, probably like some Monroe's or something. That's not bad. The car's been sitting here in this spot. Uh, it's been in the garage for the first eight years of his life since I've owned it, and it's only been out here, like I said, I drive it up and down once in a while, okay. it's in park right here. But no, I don't see like drips under where the rear axle is, so, and it looked, the axle looks dry. Um, I did do the oil change on that when I purchased it. I put that the right, right. What the, differential's uh, in it? The 373 gears. It's positive. Do you track. know what? Ford it's Motorsport? Posi Ford it's, Posi? Yes. It's so a it's traction lock? Yep, 8.8. Eight. Okay. The, uh, the Ford gears are really easy to install also. Oh, yeah. yeah. This light works, which is a plus, and the, I'm, I can shut it off by pushing that button. That thing never works. That thing never works. So. It's like the ashtray door. That thing never works. Hopefully the one. electrical system in this thing, because obviously you're yeah. buying a, a, an older car, so you want to ensure that the electrical system is in good working order. One thing I like about this car, Abe, I don't see like an aftermarket alarm. I don't know what stereo was in it, but under the hood, the wiring doesn't I, I, look I, like it's been really modified. I can't stand when you get in a car, an older car, really any car, and the seatbelt's all ginked up. This one looks good. These are in decent shape. I mean, they're easy enough to change. Let me take a look at the seatbelt on the other side, make sure that works too. Again, it's all the little stuff that you, you get a car like this home, and then you start realizing there's all these little problems. So just spending a few minutes Kind of go over the car and save you a lot of trouble down the road. Ooh, somebody left us some snacks. What kind of snacks? Chex mix? Oh, like a, no, it's just a bag, nature bar. Yeah. Um, Too okay, healthy. so it had a roll bar in it. So there's a hole in the floor there. There's and, a bolt in cage. Okay. We'd probably, we'd probably put a rug in it anyway. So the door, If the door panel's been off a bunch of times, you'll see clips missing. Again, like that. 
So there's yeah, broken clips, broken clips and stuff. You can get all that stuff new. That's probably uh, somebody doing speakers or something. Yeah, anything and this here. thing is, this used to have the uh, mat pockets over here, and it looks like it was cut off because it was probably hanging too low. Yeah, they that all kind of really stretched out, and then they looked bad. Yeah, they had the ones with, with, that were like carpet, and yep. then the pockets. These were the carpet, uh, the pocket ones. I remember the ones with the pleats, and they always just kind of. Mm -hmm. We're out. Here's another thing to look at, Abe. So this is just somebody did a cheap repair. This piece cracked. As you can see, there's a crack behind it, and it would have just kept falling off. And it's usually off. from uh, tightening it too much. Correct, because this is, isn't a really terrible problem yeah. area on a Mustang, but they solved it with a washer and just like a sheet metal screw. Again, you know, if you want your car to look good, you're going to have to buy one of these. You might have to get a repair kit, get the screw. But this feels pretty tight, and yeah. sometimes they're there's a lot of looseness in them. So the fact that the mechanicals on it, I'd rather have the mechanicals be good and fix the cosmetics than the cosmetics look good and the mechanicals are not good. That's the sound you want to hear. When you shut a Fox body door, by the way. That's the sound. That's the sound you want to hear. The radiator, upper radiator mounts, they're straight and they look like they're in good shape. I mentioned this before, but you're really looking at the upper radiator support here is very important on these cars and it's a really easy tell if the car has been whacked because you'll see weld marks or where the frame has been straightened or fixed and it really appears that this car is in decent shape. The headlights going to need all new headlights and stuff. <clears throat> On these cars, <clears throat> if you can see in here, Abe, you twist this off, back it off, and then you can get, the, get to the wiring. <clears throat> you got to be careful not to break that stuff. It's old, plastic, brittle stuff at this point. So when you're working around an older car, one of the things you want to really do is take your time. And we'll show you that when we go through the car more if we end up taking it home. We'll really give you the detailed uh, story. There is a, a rust area under the battery on these because water can sit in the battery tray and rust down under. We're not going to go ahead right now and take the battery out. It's a big battery. But we're checking... We're checking the hold down and it, everything works. You, you know, again, just little stuff. If you don't have this battery hold down, then, which is right here, and the battery is flopping around, you could be in for wiring problems or just the battery banging around. And it won't pass tech if you're at the track. <laughs> and it yeah. won't pass tech if you're at the track. Correct.